Ever had three joint practices with three opponents in the preseason. How do you think that prepares you guys for the upcoming year? It's all about your, your intent, the, your mindset when you're going into a joint practice. Uh, I've never done more than two. I haven't, but with us and the, the way that we try to approach every day is, is put our best foot forward every day. Uh, we have a standard that we never want to let, let, let it drop. So it, it really doesn't matter if we're going against each other or going against another team. That standard is the same. So the joint practice, it don't matter if it's two or three. For us, we like to approach all those practices with, with full intent. I'm really curious what the next couple weeks look like for you, because obviously you have a break before week one. Is it more fine-tuning, more ramping up, or do you guys turn the page and start to look towards the Jaguars in week one? Yeah, I mean, once, we, once we're able to close this chapter of the, of the preseason, we, all eyes on the Jaguars, for sure. For sure. Game planning, all in preparation, ramping up. I'll be doing a, a lot more reps, for sure. In, in anticipation of that of week one, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a big big matchup, man. We we got to start fast coming out of this season. Finally, I gotta ask you about the sideline right now. I was over there on that side when you guys got the touchdown. John Embry is the head coach at the moment. Yeah. What's it been like watching the keys get turned over to him for the second half? It's been great. Uh, Embo, he's a, he's deserving. He's been around for a very long time, been highly successful. He poured so much into his guys into that position group. Uh, we all we got so much love and care for and respect for Embo. So we want to go out here and win for it. All right, see if you guys can get it done. Teron Armstead, thank you so much. We'll see you in week one, guys. Back to you. Hi, right, Mike. Thanks so much. Thanks to Teron for joining us. Buccaneers, a couple of big plays by running back Sean Tucker. And they have a first and goal to go now. Three-yard line, he stepped out. Here's Tucker. Oh, getting in the backfield. Colbert, the safety, first man there. And they're going to lose a couple. Nice Manning Tindall again in on the stop. Just knifed through the gap and was able to make a make a play on it. These safeties are uh, they're, they're, they're using these safeties in a lot of different ways. Yeah, Colbert started his college career at Columbia, drafted to Rhode Island, uh, transferred to Rhode Island, and then undrafted. And he's another guy the Dolphins have been impressed with. Yep. There's a lot of those so. secondary players, and again, they go down to 53 on Tuesday afternoon, but 16 players can be on the practice squad. I got a feel they're feeling there's going to be a, a few cornerbacks and, and some safeties on that uh, on that practice squad. Second and goal. Tucker with the handoff. He's met solidly, and he didn't get there. It's Jackson, along with Isaiah Johnson. Speaking of undrafted, Johnson, another one at that corner position. And, you know, one of the things about Johnson and Matry and Storm Duckbo, there really hasn't been any drop-off throughout training camp from those from those rookies. No, they, they've played consistently from day one. You know, they, they went through all the offseason and did everything. They've got their preparation. And when they've been given the opportunity, they've played at a very, very high level. And really, sometimes you see them play well one game, and then they fall off the next game. It hasn't been the case with them. Trask backs off from under center on third and goal. He's got time here. Throwing end zone. Incomplete Isaiah Johnson. Broke it up. It was intended for Miller, who caught one right in that spot earlier in the game, and Johnson wasn't having any of it. Made up some distance there and then got a hand up. Knocked the ball away. Good coverage all the way across the field. Look at that. Picks up the coverage. Boom. Nice play. Tampa Bay will go for it. Fourth and goal at the two. Third straight week, we got a game within a score in the fourth quarter. <laughs> and teams going for it on fourth down deep in territory. Anthony Weaver looking for a play from his defense. Trask throws, end zone. Miller holds that one in, touchdown. Tampa Bay. Able to convert on the fourth down. And they're back up by nine. Isaiah Johnson trailed him. Pretty decent coverage, but the ball was uh, we were in the, the, uh, we, just like this last touchdown we saw. Just a really good throw and right where it needed to be. Step behind. Second straight time and third time in the game. They went right to that spot, yep. and that was the rookie canoe. That's a nice catch. So the Buccaneers respond to the Dolphins' touchdown. The Dolphins got the extra point, 11.46 to go. Tampa takes it nine plays and 70 yards. And they go back up by 10 on the Dolphins. 
back there. It's off his hands. And it'll be a touchback. So after Isaiah Johnson made that terrific play, then they got the touchdown on him. Look at Jalen Ramsey. You talk about these players being fully invested. Hey, Ramsey's a veteran. He's won a Super Bowl, Bo. He doesn't need to do that with an no. undrafted player, but he has taken a major leadership role on this team. Yeah, I think everybody, you know, all these veterans know what's expected this year, know what they're anticipating, what the season is going to be like for them. And so, the, 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 you know, we've said it all along. You know, the, the better you help the younger players, the better it makes the whole team. And I think they've all bought into it. You can't look at, if you're going to listen to Jalen Ramsey, you're going to listen pretty hard on that, you know. <laughs> so that ball through the end zone comes out to the 30. Marlin sticks his helmet in there, and he picks up six yards on first down. Coming up, don't miss the Mega Millions winning numbers in the CBS News Miami. That's tonight following the game. CBS Miami is your official Florida lottery station. Now, Skyler Thompson, at quarterback tonight, has gone 15 of 18 for 149 yards and the two touchdowns. One of the tight end, Rucci, and the other to McGowan, two at Tungabailoa. One drive all preseason. That was last week. He was perfect. Mike White started the game tonight. He went five of nine for 37 yards. And Skyler came into the second quarter and has taken it the rest of the way. Little pitch out to McFarland trying to turn the corner. Cuts it inside. Maybe a yard, that's it. It'll bring up third down. You know, I think however that quarterback, uh, that backup quarterback situation shakes out, if you're Skyler Thompson and you lay your head down in the bed tonight, you're going to feel like you've done everything you could to get that job and and, uh, and, and, and be proud of what he's done. You know, he's, you know, he's, he's studied, he worked hard, uh, he, he's made it play on the, on the field, and, and he's been very consistent with what he's done. So he should be very happy with where he's at right now. See both quarterbacks, Tua and Mike White, very engaged still in this game. Third and three for the Dolphins. Thompson over the middle, McGowan with the catch. He was right at the marker on that. He falls forward, and I think he's got it with that effort. Absolutely. Now, Kyrick McGowan played a couple games for Washington last year. Undrafted out of Northwestern, then went to Georgia Tech for a year. Putting on some good film here in the second half of this game. Hard to keep track with these college players now with the transfer portal. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Cowan with three catches, 18 yards, and touchdown tonight. Now Horvath is in the game, another one of those running backs mentioned along with McFarland Dolphins picked up this week, Xander Horvath out of Purdue. Aiden Rucci still in there, putting the work in. Yeah, he and Fortson, the only two tight ends dressed for this game. Yep. Jonu Smith, Julian Hill, Durham Smythe, Tanner Connor all did not play tonight. Really looking forward to what the what what that uh, the tight end position is going to look like. What kind of production? Uh, how they're going to fit into the offense? You know it's going to be creative. Uh, you know you, you throw in Alec Ingold, the guy we talked about, talked to in the second quarter, and he's one of those guys can do multiple things in the passing game and the running game. Harley's out there, and Thompson delivers. Big play for the Dolphins, a gain of 25 yards. Nice throw, nice catch. Mike White, happy for Thompson delivering that ball. He's now 17 of 20 in the game. Horvath hit it running back from the Tampa 35. There's the pitch outside. And big Xander Horvath powers his way to get about three yards and goes 6'3", 230. You know, you see Mike White on the sideline coming. It's, it's becoming redundant with when you look at these groups. Every group, they're rooting for their other guy, whether they're fighting to take your job or whatever. It's uh, it's, it's it's every man is, you know, invested in everybody else. And uh, it's just kind of become a trademark of this football team right now. They got flags, yeah. 12 in formation. 
Offense. Five yard penalty, second down. Yeah, one too many there on the field for the Dolphins. Burton and Yankee had both come on. It's two wide receivers. A little frustration there by Skyler. You know those quarterbacks. If something like that happens and they just you, you can just see it in their body language. What the heck? Well, Yankee is the one wide receiver that stays on, along with Harley and Burton. Jay and Yankee picked up this week by the Dolphins out of South Dakota State, his twin brother. He and his twin brother wow. were, were signed by Houston, undrafted this year. Thompson throws, there's Yankee. And he makes the catch. It's a pretty fascinating story because he's Jaden. His brother is Jackson. They won three high school championships together. And then at South Dakota State, they won a couple of college championships. They played on the same team every year since second grade. Wow. But now, Yankee was let go, and he's on the Dolphins. Yeah, incredible. You get all these kinds of stories in, yeah. in preseason and training yeah. camps. Guys living the dream. You know, it's those guys that come out of those small schools every now and then, and, you know, they've had the rough road to get there, and they've been overlooked so many times. Now they get an opportunity like this. It's pretty special. Thompson trying to get out of trouble, and he throws yeah. it away. That's a good play by him on yes, third and six. He was going to go down and just got rid of it just in time. It's a heads-up play. I mean, you know, sometimes you look at that and you say, I feel but you know, it, 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 it takes some, uh, some patience and some, some confidence to do it. Every time I look, I keep seeing Patrick Paul blocking somebody pretty well. Well, you talk about Patrick Paul, big number 52. You see him there drafted in the second round. He has got a ton of playing time in the preseason. He's pretty much played about all of every game. Yep. You know, he's, now he's played both sides. Give him an opportunity. All right, we got fourth and six for the Dolphins. Thompson over the middle, incomplete. Right at the first down marker. It was intended for McGowan. Uh, Tampa Bay gets the stop. So 6.45 to go, and that Buccaneers lead remains 10 as we wind down preseason football. 